I should go. Welcome to Nerds in the Wild, the vlog. This is where I sit in front of the camera and try to say something clever about nerd culture and about outdoor pursuits. This week, fewer jump cuts. I'm going to be looking at a word that appears in both the fantasy worlds of books and movies and video games and in the real life world of wilderness camping and extreme sports. That word? Adventure. Adventure really does appear all over the place. It's uh, We've got adventure games, we've got adventure uh, TV shows, we've got adventure sports, we've got adventure movies. Uh, in Dungeons and Dragons, the old tabletop game, uh, the characters used to be called adventurers. And we know the Jedi don't crave adventure. Uh, we know the whale watchers do crave adventure. We, um, you know, there used to be a genre of video game called adventure games that mixes what we now consider to be role-playing games with tactical strategy games. Uh, we know Bilbo Baggins referred to them as nasty, bothersome things that would make you late for dinner. But what the heck are they? Well, let's start with what they're not. They're not quests. Quests are very goal-oriented. Go here, kill this, get that, bring it back, win the hand of a fair maid. That's something a Jedi or a knight or a soldier would do. And they're not adventurers. Well, maybe a knight, but Jedi definitely not adventurers. So that's not it. It's also something that you don't generally set out to have or to do. I mean, Bilbo Baggins is the exception. He was recruited to have an adventure specifically, but none of the rest of the dwarves were. Uh, and in general, it seems that an adventure is something that happens to someone, whether they want it to happen or not. Alice in Wonderland didn't set out to have an adventure. Joan Wilder didn't set out to have an adventure in Romancing the Stone. Han Solo didn't have one when he signed up to take a, an old man, a boy, and two droids to Alderaan. It just seemed to happen. So if you don't set out to have something, it's not something you do, and it's something that happens to you whether you want it to happen or not, that falls into the realm of an experience. An experience you could anticipate, in the case of Bilbo or the Whale Watchers, uh, or you could recognize during the fact, or even recognize after the fact. There also seems to be a state of mind involved, a way of looking at the experience. Adventures often have an element of danger or misery or stress in them, and if you focus on that in a negative way, it's not an adventure. Well, adventures are they're fun. I've come to think of adventurers like this. An adventure is the story you tell. It's how you've chosen to look at an experience in a positive way. Lost in the city? It's an adventure. Caught out in a hailstorm? What a story to tell. Your guide's shortcut led you to climb a cliff with a 40-pound pack and only a dubious rope to support you? Wait till they hear about this back home. And interestingly, you can choose to have make something an adventure long after you've had the experience. Now, you may have been miserable and despondent and grouchy at the time, and then when you're back home safe and having a couple beers with your friend, choose to regale them with a story and look at it as an adventure. And that's just as valid as thinking of it as being an adventure at the time, or, or even before you started. I personally try to think of as many things as possible as an adventure. But it's nice to know that if I can't think of some horrible, stressful experience as an adventure, I can always change it later. Or as one of my friends says as we climb the 50th mud-slimed cliff of the day, you know, in about a month, this will have been an awesome day. I'll see you next week.